Welcome again to our weekly online worship service with Augustana Lutheran Church, Boone, Iowa. Welcome to our online worship resource for the Holy Trinity, a Sunday for June 7th, 2020. As we gather together, I invite you, as, as has been our practice, uh, to, if you're able to light a candle at home, a reminder that we gather, even though we are apart, we are together, gathered around Christ, who is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome also serves as a reminder that each of us in our own ways is invited, empowered to reflect the light of Christ into a world that indeed is pretty dark at times. Uh, before we begin our worship, um, I do want to encourage you, there'll be a, a new resource online on the worship resource, and in the coming days, you will see it on our website. A brief video giving you an update um, on the COVID-19 situation as we begin to think about returning to church. I encourage you to take a look at that, that video. We begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Genesis. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. 
and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that had been made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that had been done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now listen to Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, as she reads our gospel uh, for the day and brings the good news of Jesus to all of us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. 
Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, 
closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, Anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise. And I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. We enter now into our prayers of intercession. Each petition will close with the words, Hear us, O God. You are invited to respond with the words, Your mercy is great. Your mercy is great is your response. Let us pray. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within us. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates, who pursue justice and often ignored communities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work endures the safety and well being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day. We pray especially for Mary. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, Bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and in our communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as we come towards the end of our service. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs>